A pivot table is another view for your tables or your queries, and your queries are based upon tables. And in this view, you have the ability to graphically format or customize to where you can have not only column headers but row headers and the ability to pivot or filter in or filter out data fairly quickly. Once you have the foundation of pivoting in your pivot tables, you can actually create charts or pivot charts. So to get started, I've got my query here, and I want to change the view to a pivot table view. To do that, I want to come up here on the Home tab to the Views group, click on the View drop-down arrow, and you're familiar with by now, if you've already taken Level 1 and Level 2 of, of my Access Training videos, the data sheet view and the design view. Well, let me introduce you to the pivot table view. It has my fields sitting over in this nice little box over to the right, where in the normal data sheet view, all the fields would be up at the top for my column headings. Well, now I can customize this and say, look, all you have to do is click and drag these fields over here for my column headers or my column fields, my row fields, and then my main data down below. And then, of course, up at the top, you have an extra filter field here. It really comes down to knowing your database to where you want to drag and drop or place your fields here. For example, I've got products that I sell, and I have the price of each of the product and the quantity that I've sold on the different transaction dates. So out of this, I'm thinking, I would like to take the category, and I click and drag it, and I want to say that this is going to be my filter field. Okay, bear with me. I'm going to finish up here. I'm going to come over here for my products, and I want my products by clicking and dragging and saying that these will be my row fields. So in other words, I can filter in and out of my products by clicking on the drop-down arrow, which currently displays all of my products. Or I can say, of these products, on the hierarchical level, the categories on top, and I can say, well, I don't want to see all the products, I just want to see those that are tied to the category accessories and click OK. And I've got just two of them. All right. You can see the triangles turn blue, so that means that something filterish is going on here. So I can just pivot by clicking on the drop down arrow out of that by checking on all and then clicking OK and it brings it all back. OK. So that's what I have for my products, which doesn't give me much because I need something more. And that something more is going to be the transaction dates. Now sure you can click and drag other fields up at the top for your column fields, but really it's understanding your database. And I want it by transaction date, let's say not by week, but by month. So I'll click and drag by month and put it up here for my column fields. Now I know right now it's looking at years, even though I said by month, and we'll change that later, but I'm getting close. So I can filter everything by categories, whether it's going to be accessories, sleeping bags, tiki torches, then I have the products, that I can filter out by and also the transaction date. Now I just need some data to filter by and the data for me that's important is going to be the price and the quantity, both. So how do you add both to your main data field that you want to filter in and out in the center here? Well you just shift click on both here and then you can just click and drag both to the center. Okay. Now if I add fields that I didn't mean to add, then just click on the field header here and there's one of two ways to get rid of them. You can either click on it, come up here on the design tab to the active field and say remove field, or you can click on the header and click and drag and move it up. And you see where my pointer's at in this blue area, it's got a red X. If I let go of that, it also removes that field as well. So to add it again, just click and drag or shift click both and then down below, I can click the drop down arrow and say add it to the detailed data field here and click on add to and it adds it as well. Okay, bear with me because right now we just got the uh, structure of it, the main structure which says hey I can filter by category now, by products, I get the price each, the quantity each, but you know what I don't have? I don't have the total sales which includes the price times the quantity. So I'm going to add another field that will multiply uh, the price each by the quantity. And you notice for my air mattresses, I have a different quantity. Well, that's going to be based upon by date, which we'll talk about later here. That's why I have several different quantities because it's for each day of transaction or each order that was made with an order number, keeping track of that. So to add another field, a custom field where I can perform calculations, I'm going to come up here on the design tab over to the, the tools group, click on the formulas drop down arrow and come down and click on create calculated detail field. Click on that, brings up a nice little pop-up window. The name of it, you can see it's already added, calculated, and it's calculated there. I'm going to delete that, and I'm going to type in sales, because my sales is going to be, well, price multiplied by the quantity. 
So to come up with that expression, you just need to come down here and, re and replace the zero that's listed here with, and you want to spell it right, price. Now this is, now the name of my field is price each, and it has a space. This is important because if I have a space and it's not all slammed together, then I have to do something else. But if it was slammed together, let me explain it this way, price each, I can just multiply it by quantity, and that would be that, and I click change and I'd be done. I'm getting an error because it doesn't like this expression because I didn't add a space. Well, that makes sense. If I just add a space and I click change to update this, I still get an error. And the reason why is because it doesn't like spaces. It can't figure it out. So what we have to do is we have to bracket off any name that we want to multiply by another field with brackets. So if I just do an open square bracket and a closed square bracket, then it knows that the space here isn't something more. It's thinking it's three fields. That's why it can't figure it out and it gives us an error. So if we encase it in brackets, then it says, oh, this price space each is the whole field. Click change, and there we go. Because quantity is just one word here and it doesn't have a space or a character to confuse it, I didn't have to add square brackets around the quantity field. Okay, I could if I wanted to, but I'm fine with it now. So there's the total sales here. 45 times 15 is 675. Fantastic. Well, I'm not done yet because, you know, the numbers are fine, but how about if we change this format to currency? Come up here, click on the Format tab, come down here where it says Number, change it from General, and let's go down to Currency. Automatically updates, looks good. Okay, next, I want to be able to get the total price for my sales here. In other words, the total for mattresses, campfire bags, day cots. To do that, well, you want to make sure that you click on the heading if I want the total um, calculation for this field here, sales. If I want it for price each, click on that, but we'll do it for sales here. Come up here on the Design tab to the Tools group, click on the Auto Calculate drop-down button, and let's go to Sum. There we go. Cool. So it gives me the total um, sales for air mattresses for all the different dates of transaction. Well, at least it's not displaying it by date because I still have it set to the year 2008. And then if I'm giving a presentation and they just say, well, just give us the totals. I don't want to look at all the different dates of transaction totals here. Then I can come up here on the Design tab to the Show Hide group and click on the Hide Details button. So it just gives me the total sales for my air mattresses here. There it is for the year 2008. And if I had other years, it would give me the grand total. But the grand total of 2008 are the same numbers here. Now, if I want to be able to display this by months and not by years, what I'll do is I'll click to the plus sign to left of 2008 and then I'll go ahead and click the plus sign to expand quarter one as well and then what I'll do is I'll come up here and I'll click on the years click on the years and drag it up till I get that red X and then let go get rid of my years don't want quarters click on quarters and then click and drag and drag it off until I get that red X so it disappears now I just have it by months pretty cool and then let's see what it looks like when I click on the category and uncheck all and I just look at it, at it at accessories and click OK. It's really nice with the pivot table because I'm able to crunch things a little bit tighter here than having a query where it's all by column headers there. I also get my row heading so I'm able to condense more data in a smaller space than I could if I just used the table or a query there by displaying the fields over to the left and up on the top as well for my column and row headers. Okay, once I'm finished with this and I no longer have need of it right now, just be sure to save your work. I can click on the drop down arrow and go back to my data sheet view. That's always there. But because I saved it, I can of course always come back and click on the drop down and go back to my pivot table view and then make changes. And of course, if your field list isn't showing up, you may want to click somewhere within the uh, pivot table here. And if it still doesn't come up, of course, you can always click on field list and bring it back up as well. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.